All right, let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is a YouTube channel that I've been really into. It's Farmhouse on Boone. Um, it's a woman named Lisa who has a family, tons of kids, and a husband, and they live in a farmhouse essentially. And um, she just teaches skills um, that I find very useful, though I don't have a farmhouse. I don't have a ton of people to look after or take care of. She has videos on how to take care of cast iron skillets and what to do with your sourdough starter. And um, I have a neighbor who gave me a bit of his sourdough starter. It's like a six year old one. So I've been looking after it. But the thing is with sourdough starter, you feed it every day if you leave it on your counters. So the dough actually doubles every day. Um, so she has a video on what to do with the excess. So of making waffles and scallion pancakes and I want to eventually make bread obviously but um, yeah I'm taking a little break so I've been keeping this in the fridge but I'm really excited to get started with baking and everything because I've had this deep fear of baking for a long time and after watching a ton of Lisa's videos it made it a lot more doable in a way because she breaks it down into very um, digestible pieces, I guess. Check out her channel if you're interested in learning some new skills. Some beauty favorites. I've been wearing this perfume a ton lately. This is Missing Person by Fleur. And you can get this at Sephora. And it smells like, let's say you like the Glossier you scent. You like a personal scent. Something that smells very much like your own skin. Um, this smells like, you know, like when you wear a t-shirt all day and then you take it off and there's like a little bit of that musky scent to it. So when I was younger, my mom used to go to Europe all the time and visit my aunt and she'd be gone for like, I don't know, 10 days or something like that. And it felt like forever. When you're a kid, it always feels like forever, right? So I used to take her perfume out of her closet and take a blast out of her closet and spray it down. And the scent that she always wore was white musk. This one kind of reminds me of that because it's like a very warm, caramely scent. I'm really bad at describing scents, but I'll leave like the notes in the description also down here if possible. I actually didn't realize I had a scent from this brand. It's this one right here. It's Sandara. It smells almost like Santal 33. I like this a little bit better because everyone in LA wears Santal 33, right? So I, I like this a little bit better because to me it's a little bit more bright. It's almost like commodity book. But yeah, they switched their um, packaging, so now it looks like this, and I feel like this is a little bit more elegant, so yeah, kind of stoked on that. So my skin's been super dry with like dry patches all around lately, so I've been using this moisturizer right here. This is from Glossier. It's called the After Bomb. It's their new moisturizer. There's also Glossier Rich, which is like a thicker moisturizer. This one's great though, because you use the tiniest amount, like you just dip your finger in, maybe just this much, and then warm it in between your hands and really break it down and then I just press it on in the way that you would do the La Mer. This one's way more affordable. It doesn't smell like anything and I love the packaging too. The colors are so cute, the pink and green and this is kind of like a milk glass. So yeah, stunning packaging. So the last couple of years I haven't really been wearing that much foundation and then I got this one in the mail. This is from Kosas, it's the revealer. I love the concealer so I started using this and I used it with like a beauty blender kind of sponge and um, I love this because it looks like your natural skin. It's a little bit more than just a tinted moisturizer or a skin tint. And it's meant to be skincare benefits along with a foundation, so there's coverage. Um, but yeah, it really hydrates my skin. It makes everything look well moisturized. And the color that I have here is medium, neutral, warm. I think it might be a little bit too light for me, but after I bronze and everything, it looks perfect. Really into this foundation. If you have dry skin, this is something you must try. I had a friend from New York stay with me a few weeks ago and she went out and bought one of these Japanese washcloth things that you keep in the shower. And I had an old roommate in college who used this and Maddie bought one when we were in Japan as well. I never actually tried one until I went to Mitsua a couple weeks ago with my friend Karumi and she was like, yeah, this works great. The first time I used it, it was like using a body scrub without actually using a body scrub. It lathers up your soap super nicely and I like running this across my legs because 
it gives it a very gentle exfoliation so right before you shave and everything it kind of lifts up all the dead skin and all the hair and everything and I have like this issue with strawberry legs if you guys know what that is um, and it's really been helping with that exfoliating away all the debris in a very gentle way so really into this right now March has been such a great month for collecting ceramics for me so I have a few things here I got this little bell from Kelly Burnett and I'm such a huge fan of her ceramics. There's something about the way that she throws. As soon as I pick up a piece that's like at the studio, I know it's hers because it feels different from the way a lot of my stuff feels because we throw in such different ways. I think she uses very little water when she throws. I just think it's so elegant. I've been keeping it in my kitchen, but I want to find a better place for it so that it's more visible. Yeah, really, really into this. So I was at the studio and um, there's this guy who makes these sculptures. This is it right here. This is Fielding Ceramics. It's all hand built. Like you could see his fingerprints in some of this right here. And it feels like cast iron because it's so heavy and it even looks like cast iron too. Um, yeah, I think he did such a good job with this. But yeah, so he made a few of these. But this one, one of the legs got stuck to the cookie. So it was a little bit shorter than the rest he's like i can't sell this and i happened to be standing right there so he's like you want it because i just complimented him um and the, yeah so then i got it and i really love it and then i went on his website and the site is stunning such a creative human being um yeah i'm so stoked to have this and i gotta find a really good place for it because right now it's just on my mantle and i feel like my mantle is a little bit busy so um yeah i gotta find a good place to kind of put this a couple months ago I walked into the studio store that I go to and um, they had this piece on display this is from Diane B and I remember seeing it and being like oh man I really love this so I set the money aside for it I didn't want to make any like impulse buys which I tend to do so I set the money aside for it and then a couple weeks later um, I was going to buy it but then I showed it to my boyfriend he was like wait you've made something like that before which I gave him a couple years ago um, so he's like, why don't you just make it? So then I tried to make it. It didn't turn out the way I liked it. So as soon as I got my piece out of the kiln, I went over to the studio and then bought this one. I just think it's so beautiful and it looks even better in real life, I think. And it's glazed beautifully. I mean, I don't know. I just love it. And the coolest thing about this is now I can go <laughs> Diane B. Leonardo DiCaprio has some of her pieces too, so yeah. Dacia, she's a studio member. I don't think she sells anything yet, but she made a few pieces and just, I don't know, I think that's like the ceramicist thing to do where um, you make a few pieces and you like just give away everything. And I don't know if she keeps any of her work, but I saw this and I just fell in love and she just gave it to me. But yeah, Dacia Martinez, um, not sure if she sells any of her work yet, but oh man, I just, it's such a good weight. She said that it was too thick, but I like a thicker cup because um, I can use it for water, I can use it for hot beverages and still hold it and not like hurt myself. Um, I don't know, something about like a heavier weighted thing I just feel more secure with. Those like really thin porcelain, beautiful cups and teacups and stuff like that, those are a little bit too delicate for me because I'm pretty hard on my stuff. So I really like this. I adore it and I hope that one day she starts selling stuff because She's been making a lot of stuff. It's gotta go somewhere, right? I'm reading from a notebook, that's why I'm looking down, but um, it was my birthday this month. So I got a few gifts. Katie Dale Bout, my God, for my birthday, she went all out. She decorated her home, um, put signs up everywhere, like painted watercolor stuff, um, made three cakes, just like went all out. And she gave me so many little gifts, but one of the gifts, is this book right here it's new york times um living well and it's from the 80s or the early 80s so yeah 81 i believe that most of these photos were taken in the 70s but the home styling is phenomenal she just knows me so well it's an interiors book and there's like a lot of kitchen porn and like living room setup i like that a lot of these places are lived in some of these places are like just like luxury so it doesn't look very lived in but i like that this book kind of touches on every category of living so the minimalists the maximalists the luxury person the crowded brooklyn apartment person so yeah fantastic book my sister linda got me this knife right here for my birthday someone said 
but it's kind of strange that I get knives for gifts, but it's something that I use every single day. So um, I feel like it's the best, most practical gift. She got me this global knife that I've always wanted. This is the G2. It's so well weighted. So everything just feels balanced whenever I'm cutting stuff. I've been using this one Daiso knife for years and it's just a $3 knife and it was my favorite knife for a long time. And the craziest thing is that as soon as she got me this knife, as soon as I got it the very next day, my boyfriend broke my Daiso knife. So it was kind of like one in one out, which is kind of like the cosmos, right? Speaking of which, there's been a lot of like weird cosmos things that's been happening all in one day, like the knife thing happened. Um, and then I remember I went out to get groceries and when I came back, I was looking at my basil plant and I'm like, damn it, I forgot I get herbs. And I was just staring at my basil plant that was totally dying. And then as soon as I looked up at the door, cause I heard someone out there, um, it was my neighbor and she came by with a ton of herbs for me. And then later on that day, I went into the studio and uh, I went into the studio and I needed a leather chamois, which is this thing where you fix rims for, or fix rims with. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna go over to the store. So I walked over to the store, they didn't have it there. And then as soon as I came back, I'm like, damn it, they don't have it. And I didn't even speak it out loud or anything. But this woman, Allison, out of nowhere, within three minutes of me sitting down, she was like, does anyone want this leather chamois? Which is such a rare thing for ceramicists. So um, yeah, just such a strange month in terms of like weird alignments. Clothes that I've been wearing. So the set right here is from Ozma of California. I wish I would have known about this like when the pandemic hit because this is the most comfortable outfit. I've been wearing it almost every single day. I need to wash it, but it doesn't smell or anything, so I feel fine. But um, yeah, they're just linen pants and like a knit top and it's super comfortable and yet it looks super classy. So whenever people see me, it doesn't look like I'm just wearing sweats, though it feels like I'm just wearing sweats because it's so comfortable. I feel like I'm gonna be wearing this outfit all summer. So Salter House sent me this dress a couple months ago and it's called the Chores Dress and it's just a very lightweight cotton, like summer weight um, nightgown, but you can wear it out obviously. It feels like you're wearing the softest sheets ever. And so I've been wearing it to sleep. I've been wearing it around the house. Um, right when I wake up in the morning, sometimes I sleep naked. I'll just like put it on top and go out and get the mail and stuff. I love this dress and I love the little details on it. And I think it's so classy. You know how whenever you hear about ghost stories, it's always about how there's like women with like disheveled hair and they're always like leaning over and they're wearing like a white dress or a white nightgown. I want to start looking like that, you know? I don't want to be the ghost that wears a band tee and sweats to sleep every night. Those are my favorites for the month of March. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, comments, anything, I'll leave all the stuff linked in the description box. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!